Good afternoon. Welcome to God's house today as we join together in a series of services uh, that started last Sunday uh, on the time to share effort. And today uh, we're going to focus in on the time to grow, particularly throughout our life in God's word. Uh, We are reminded uh, by the words of Paul to Timothy how from infancy you've known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So God bless our service today, and uh, we'll follow the order uh, of service of word and sacrament as it's printed in your service folder, and we'll begin with our first hymn, Lord of My Life. Please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. (laughs) 
The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Almighty God, merciful Father, crown our life with your love. You took away our sin, comfort our spirit, you make us pure and holy in your sight. You did not spare your only Son, gave him up for us all. O Lord, our Lord, glorious is your name in all the earth. O Son of God, eternal word, of the Father, you came to live with us. You made your Father known, washed us from our sins in your own blood. You are the King of glory, you are the Lord. O oh Lord, our Lord, glorious is your name in all the earth. We pray. O merciful Lord, you did not spare your only Son, but delivered him up for us all. Grant us the wisdom to continue steadfast in your holy word, using it to strengthen and increase our fragile faith in Christ every day, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Today our readings focus on the blessings of God's Word as the Holy Ghost uses it to bring faith into our hearts and then also to continue to preserve that faith throughout our life. Our first lesson from Psalm 119, beginning at verse 89. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You have established the earth and it stands fast. By your appointment they stand this day, for all things are your servants. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have given me life. I am yours, save me, for I have sought your precepts. The wicked lie in wait to destroy me, but I consider your testimonies. I have seen a limit to all perfection, but your commandment is exceedingly broad. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the aged, for I keep your precepts. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. I do not turn aside from your rules, for you have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Today we'll join in the response, Psalm 1. And uh, we'll sing the refrain and we'll read the verses responsively. Blessed is the man 
who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, But his delight is in the law of the Lord. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, and whose leaf does not wither. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked will perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and will be forever. Amen. Sit are there. Our second lesson this afternoon, 2 Timothy chapter 3, the reading begins at verse 10, will also serve as today's sermon text. You, however, have followed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions and sufferings that happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra, which persecutions I endured. Yet from them all the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil people and impostors will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Here ends our lesson. Hallelujah. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Please rise as you're able for today's gospel. The Holy Gospel recorded in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Be to you. Our hymn of the day, One Thing's Needful. Please be seated.
Now, God's grace, mercy, and peace be ours this afternoon. As we turn to the epistle lesson uh, today, we're going to take the epistle 2 Timothy in chapter 3. I'll just read again from verse 14. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it. And how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. This is God's word. Now in the name of Jesus who instructed Martha as well as he instructs us that one thing in our life is truly necessary, truly needed. Dear children of God. It's safe to say that somewhere in your life, you have established a routine. Something that you do daily, something you carry out without flaw. Uh, maybe it's the, what I call, prescription routine. You have medicine that the doctor has prescribed for you, and it's sent in little pill bottles, And on the label, you have your routine. Take one in the morning, two at noon, and three at night, or whatever. And of course, you know, if you don't follow that routine that is established, you could be in serious trouble. You know, if your medicine is for high blood pressure and you don't take it, you might hit over 200 somewhere during the day. Uh, So it's important to follow the instructions and follow the routine. You have, you've heard that, right? You have to take your medicine when you're supposed to take it. I'd like to share with you another routine that uh, had nothing to do with medicine as such. I think my great-grandpa Pip thought it did, but it didn't. He had a morning routine, and when I was small, I I couldn't have been that high. And every morning about 8 o'clock, he would come out in the kitchen, go to the cupboard, and get an 8-ounce juice glass out. And then he'd walk over to the refrigerator and get an egg. He'd crack it and funnel the yolk into the, to the glass, funnel the white into the glass. And then he'd walk over to my grandpa's, his son's liquor cabinet. And he'd pull out a bottle of brandy. That was his bottle. And he'd measure out a good jigger and pour it on top of the egg. And then he'd go and get a tablespoon And he'd scoop out a tablespoon of sugar and put that in there and take that spoon and he'd whip her all up. You know it's coming, don't you? In one slurp, down it would go. And he never winced. And I, you know, as a little guy, I'd sit there and I'd look at that and go, oh, how can you do that? Now, I want to assure you that uh, that routine of Grandpa Pip great-grandpa Pip, wasn't something that got passed down to me. I do not follow that morning procedure. Uh, In fact, I don't think I could. I might be able to do everything but the eggs. (laughs) Never mind, it was a a joke. Uh, Anyway, uh, you probably as well can think of any number of types of routines that you, you follow as well. How about your spiritual routine? You see, in the morning, uh, my morning routine is one that uh, got started with the advent of the smartphone. Uh, over a cup of coffee, I'll, because I want to be hip and do what the teenagers do, I'll look at my smartphone. My wife doesn't always like it, but that's my time with my smartphone. 
And I look at all the emails that have come in, and uh, I'll, I'll read them. I'll look at uh, the weather for the day. And then one of the tools that the apps that I found to be very helpful uh, is not only the electronic mail that you get, but did you know that our synod puts out an electronic devotion every day? And uh, you can get that on your, on your smartphone, and I use that. I, uh, I find that very helpful, a very good way to start out the morning. What is your spiritual routine? Uh, what do you follow to strengthen your faith? Or as we heard last Sunday, to share our faith. Uh, this is the second in the series of services dedicated to time to share. And uh, our focus today is the idea of the stewardship involved with the word of our God in our own individual lives. And how we manage our time in apportioning the word of God to our faith and to our life. Uh, what, a, what a wonderful routine to put our day in the hands of Jesus. Our text today points us in the same direction. The wise use of our time to establish the spiritual routine of being in God's word. And the Apostle Paul directed these words to Timothy. How from infancy you have known the Holy Scripture which is able to make you wise to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Paul is telling Timothy to continue, and that word is used, in what he had learned and what he had been given from the time he was little, through his mother, through his grandmother, and that he would not depart, not stop, but continue faithful in the personal use of God's word. So let's take a look at this. Why, why is Paul so adamant? Why, I guess, I was thinking not only of Paul, but in my call as, as a pastor, and I think every, every pastor who is faithful to his call would have a concern, as Paul had, for each of you, for each of the members of God's house, that you remain faithful and not depart, not stop, in what you have learned from the time you've been little until right now. See, there's... There's a routine there, isn't there? There's something that, that needs to take place for us. And why is that? And, and he lays it square on the table. Don't stop in the word of God. Make it a lifelong part of your life because through it, the Holy Spirit establishes faith in Christ Jesus, your Lord. Faith, life, and salvation are not existent apart from this word of God and the work of the Holy Spirit. It all works together. Nothing can be left out. And so we rejoice. I think as, as a pastor... Uh, how happy we are, how, how joyful we are when, when someone, a parent, new parent, brings a child and says, please baptize my baby. Please wash my baby with water and the word because there God's promise is that he will implant faith in the heart of that young child, 
even though they may not understand a word of it or ever remember it, that's God's promise, the promise of faith. And that's where it starts, through water and the word. And then it continues. It's why we have a Sunday school program for our children. That's why we have a publishing house who is good about getting materials into the hands of parents so that they can read. Read God's word in the closing of the day. That's why we have a Christian day school to bring God's word. I was happy today that one of our young people came up to me and said, Pastor, when's confirmation start? It's good news. I told her to go see Pastor Odell. But you and I well know that that pattern which starts in infancy and goes on through childhood easily gets broken, doesn't it? It easily gets put to the side uh, for other things. And pretty soon, instead of the routine of worship and growth in the Word of God, we have the routine of that which despises the Word. Uh, Luther used that in the explanation to the Third Commandment when he says, remember the Sabbath day. What does this mean? We should fear and love God. And here comes a strong word. I think it's a hard word. That we do not despise God's word. That's a rough word. Uh, It means that we see it as something distasteful. Not worthy of our time. Not worthy of our attention. That there are other more important issues in life than than the word of God, and quickly we get into a habit of missing worship, missing our daily devotions, and all new routine has suddenly been established, hasn't it? And uh, who do you think is the happiest? I think Satan is about the happiest he can be because he knows that you've now severed yourself from the connection that you need that God prescribes for your faith in his son Jesus Christ. How from infancy you've known the Holy Scripture which is able to make you wise through faith in Christ Jesus. And so we implore you as a pastor Continue what God has started, that good work that God has started in you. That's the principle. That's what's true for every person. Now, what's the application? How do you take that word of God that is so clear and apply it to your life? Well, I'm, I'm going to go back and, and encourage you to reconsider the routine and habit of regular worship. I might have mentioned this, I can't remember much anymore, but (laughs) I might have mentioned this two weeks ago in in closing of the church across the street that um, COVID has done us a very big disservice, frankly. Uh, And one of the things that, that has happened with that is It's become an excuse, and I'm not saying it's not a good excuse, but it has become an excuse for not gathering on a regular basis in God's house. And some of it's legitimate. I I have no argument with that. Uh, But on the other hand, a lot of it isn't. All right? Uh, There was a statistic that was given, I think, in the last forward of Christ that uh, the impact of that has been still we're 36,000 people per week short of what we were in worship 
before COVID came about. Now, what's wrong with that? We need to get God's house gathered again. That's why this temple of God is built. That's why it's here. It doesn't do any good with empty seats. Blessed are they who hear the word of God and live according to it. See? And what's that about? It's about your relationship to Christ. There isn't anything bigger, anything more important than that alone. The Holy Spirit uses God's word to bring you to faith, but he also uses God's word now to keep you in faith. You see, this is a lifelong thing. It, it, we don't come to a point, uh, and I, and I want to back up just a second. Um, so you gather in God's house, um, and we have such a, a, a wonderful way of doing that now, right? But if you can't gather in God's house, then what I, what I wanted to say is that it is incumbent on me to come to you with God's word. You've called me to be a pastor for our homebound, our shut-in people. And as long as God gives me the strength and the ability to do that, that's my call. And I want to assure you that I intend to carry it out. I intend to see God's people with his word and with the sacrament. So if you can't come here, listen for a knock on your door because I'll be coming to you. The word of God is profitable beyond just the hearing of it in worship. Paul says uh, it's profitable for teaching. Boy, um, have you got all the information and the opportunity uh, in front of you? Uh, check your mailbox when you go home today because there's uh, all kinds of opportunity for you to learn the word of God. Not just to hear it, but to learn it, uh, to keep it in front of you. So there is an unlimited amount of opportunity in addition to your own private study of God's word to learn God's word, to continue to put it in front of you. And this is really important for, I think, everyone to understand. Uh, I said, well, why do I need to go back to God's word? Why is, why is pastor offering a uh, Bible information class to everybody and not just those who are interested in membership? Because our life, and I, and I really sincerely believe this, changes about every five years. Or maybe five to ten years. Being a child isn't the same as being a teenager, is it? The, ch the challenges are really different. Right? So, we need the prayer, Lord. Let your word be a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And then once you make it through being a teenager, you fall in love. And so you get married and God grants you, according to his blessing, a family. You think that's a whole new perspective of life? Keeping up with the babies? Keeping up with your spouse? You see, that's a whole different age. It's a whole different vision. And then you, you get into the 30s and 40s and you're wondering why you're doing what you're doing, and you have this thing called a midlife crisis. Nobody ever went through that here, did they? No. And you don't know which way to turn? God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And then, 
comes the retirement years. Some people call them the golden years. And uh, I'm not so sure how golden, how golden they really are, uh, except for God's ongoing blessings during those years. Uh, but uh, all of a sudden, we can't hear as well. We can't remember so much. So every phase of life, from the time we're born until the time we die, has a need for God's word to direct it, to guide it. And so I, I pray that you'll take advantage of that and join, commit the stewardship of your time to a Bible study here at Christ Lutheran. Grandpa Pip, I guess he enjoyed his raw egg, brandy, and sugar as a routine every morning. But you know one thing I never did see Grandpa Pip do, Great Grandpa Pip? I never saw him go to church with us. I can't remember being with him in God's house. And I believe that's really, really, really sad. Because Jesus Christ died for Grandpa Pip and shed his blood for Grandpa Pip. And I hope somehow in God's grace and his love, Grandpa Pip died in faith. But how important then that you and I let the word of Christ until that day Christ calls us. That we let the word of Christ dwell in us, you know the word? Richly. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll join now in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. You'll find them on page 12 of the service folder. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death, and was buried. And the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. A reminder that uh, you have in front of you in the pew care cards, and uh, we ask that all of our worshipers uh, please use them, uh, uh, especially if you're a guest and we'd like to uh, have your, your uh, information if possible. And uh, so fill them out. Uh, you may do that now and during the time of the offering and then place them in the uh, uh, offering plate. Uh, you'll see it on the way out uh, through the center doors. Uh, thank you for doing that. At this time, uh, we're going to uh, see a a video that was made. Um, the note is for you in the bulletin on page 12. Uh, it's a testimonial video uh, uh, that uh, one of the members here in Christ would like to share with you uh, in the sense of how richly God has blessed his life through God's word. Hello. 
My name is Keith Holbeck, and I am chairman of the Board of Elders at Christ Lutheran Church. I was asked by Pastor Odell to say a few words about some of the Bible classes offered here at Christ. My wife Kathy and I became members here in September of 2017. We started to come to the class offered between the 8 a.m. and 10.30 service on Sunday. Because we are new members, we got to know some of the people that are members at Christ that were attending these classes. There were many things that were discussed that, that related to the services from the sermon at that Sunday. Some of the topics discussed were why we believe what we believe and how we can be certain that these facts presented through our Bible classes are, are indeed the true word of our Lord and Savior. Through these classes, we know that no matter what challenges we face in our life, our Lord is with us each and every day. Pastor explained how we can be certain that our Lord sent his son Jesus Christ to take away our sins. In doing so, this opened heaven's door for us when our life is over at the end of this world. We have been blessed and are able to dedicate this new church building, but what we need to remember is that this is only a building that gives our congregation a much easier access to come to church and hear God's word presented to us each week. We need to remember that, as Pastor Odell stated in his dedication service, this facility is a building, and the church of our Lord and Savior are the members of this congregation that attend the church as often as possible. The Bible classes help to strengthen our faith and provide us with the means we can use when we go out into the world and inform all the people we meet about what God's saving message is to us. Through this message, his comfort and assurance that he gives us is that each and every day of our lives here on earth, when our life ends, we can look forward to eternal life in heaven with him and all of our heaven believers in his word. The Bible classes help us to understand what our Lord and Savior does for us each and every day of our lives. We can be thankful for our staff here at our school and for both of our pastors, Pastor Odell and Pastor Weber. Finally, I would invite you all to try to attend one of these many Bible classes offered here at Christ Lutheran Church. Please rise. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we now prepare to receive the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to them, and said, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you for the remission of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Before we close uh, this afternoon, a special prayer uh, of thanksgiving at the wedding anniversaries of two of our members, uh, Jim and Barb Schofield, celebrating 40 years of marriage, and then Carol and Don Hiller, also celebrating their wedding anniversary, 65 years of marriage. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for the grace by which you have sustained your servants throughout the many years of their married lives. We ask that you continue to fill their hearts with unselfish love that reflects your sacrificial love for them so that their love for each other may never grow weary. With every joy and sorrow they share, bring them closer. And to you, their God and Lord, keep them faithful. Encourage all husbands and wives as they seek to fulfill their marriage promises and bless all their homes with your abiding peace. Amen. And hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, which the lips that have praised you here may now glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. And amen, amen. Our closing hymn today, How Precious is the Book Divine. is the book divine by inspiration
Again, welcome to our service this afternoon. Um, there's going to be a video that, uh, one more we're going to see, and then that's it, okay. And then uh, you have a handout for us as well uh, on the way out this afternoon. Uh, a couple of things on my part. Uh, uh, again, two words of encouragement for you. Check your mailboxes. There's information uh, in there regarding the senior ministry. I haven't spoken about that really since the last time we met, but uh, the day is coming again uh, in the month of September, and uh, I put uh, just some general information about the things that we're going to do and what we want to accomplish. And so uh, also next week, there's going to be another handout put in your mailbox uh, again on senior ministry uh, that we're starting uh, uh, this month in September. So, so please look for that. The second thing is uh, Sunday morning Bible class that I'm going to be doing is a Bible information class, uh, but everyone is certainly invited to attend. Uh, in order to have the proper space and provide the right amount of materials, I put a registration form out for that class. So if you're interested, uh, that'll be on Sunday morning at 9.30 on the Sundays that I'm preaching. Okay. So those are my two things. Uh, we have a video. Hello, my name is Dan Moyle, and I'm serving as the chairman of our Time to Share campaign. As you likely know, we finished out the three-year Time to Build campaign. The building is in place, and now we are turning our attention from construction to ministry and to ensuring that we have the lowest possible amount of commercial debt. In just two short weeks since we started utilizing this new sanctuary and fellowship hall, we've already reaped some benefit. Not only is the worship experience more robust and meaningful, but several people have stated that now they can actually attend worship in person, as the old building was too difficult for them to navigate. Others have stated that they can hear during worship much more clearly now with the improved acoustics. Moreover, many people have taken advantage and commented on the wonderful blessing of fellowship in our new large gathering space. These are just some of the benefits for us, but what about other folks? This new building is designed to benefit both us and those in our community. How? By you and me reaching out to those that are unchurched and inviting them here. Here for Bible study. Here for the various events that we have planned and here for worship. The building is here now so that we can both utilize it for ministry purposes, but also give glory to God for all that he has done for us. Many of you will be receiving in email and postal mail an invitation for our last three Time to Share events coming up September 8th, 10th, and 11th. There we will recount the many blessings we've received and learn how we can give thanks to God for them and for this building. The events are short, no longer than 45 minutes. There will be pies and muffins and donuts available, depending on which one you attend. If you already attended a Time to Share workshop or have had a personal visit, there's no need to attend. However, you're still invited for worship and snacks. Oh, one other piece of good news. Not only do we have a Savior that has given us all good things, but we've been blessed with strong and early significant pledges for time to share. In just this last month, we have received pledges for $434,000 to pay down the building debt. That's amazing. And we've also received $83,000 in cash offerings this last month to go toward the building project. Please join me in giving thanks to our God for these wonderful gifts. We all have been richly blessed. Thank you. I'll greet you in the uh, fellowship room, and uh, God bless your week, uh, and uh, find your place to get involved regularly in his word. There's also a booklet uh, that's going to be handed out on the way out, so thank you.